what's going on guys in this video i'm going to show you how to set up the gamecube and wii emulator dolphin on mac also i will be using this device here called the dolphin bar that acts as a real sensor bar for your mac so that we can pair and use a real wii remote with this emulator I will leave a link in the description if you would like to pick one up. Now as you notice in the picture, it does come with a little stand that you can mount on top or underneath of your monitor. I have lost mine, so I would just set it on my desk under my monitor. And for GameCube emulation, I will be using an Xbox Series controller. Okay, let's go ahead and head on over to DolphinMU.org. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click right here where it says download Dolphin. Now you have the option to download the beta version or the development version. The development version will allow you to use the latest updates, but as they state, these updates are less tested. And if you use the beta version, you will have stability over the newest features. This is up to you, but I'm going to use the beta version. And since we are on Mac, I'm going to go ahead and click right here, Mac OS. Do you want to allow downloads? Allow. Now go ahead and open up your downloads folder and we're gonna drag that dolphin file to the desktop. Now go ahead and click on that file. Then over here, click on dolphin. Are you sure you want to open? Open. Do you authorize dolphin to report information to dolphins developers? I'm gonna select no. So the first thing you may notice when you open the emulator is right here. It says double click here to set a game's directory. Let's go ahead and lower this emulator for a minute. So here on my desktop, you may have noticed these two files over here. I have a GameCube game, Sonic Avenger 2 Battle, and I have a Wii game, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Now both of these files are 7-zip files and your ROMs must be extracted to be playable in Dolphin. And on Mac, to extract them is simple. All you wanna do is double click on the file. So we'll do Sonic Avenger 2. And the file will start extracting. And we'll do the same thing for Resident Evil. Double click it, and it'll start extracting. Now we no longer need the zip files, so we can go ahead and delete those. And now we have our two extracted files, but they are inside of these folders. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new folder. So right click new folder, call that folder, whatever you like. I'm just going to call it dolphin games and let's open that Sonic Avenger folder. And inside you will find the file you need. Here's our Sonic Avenger 2 battle ISO file. And we're just going to drag it into that dolphin games folder. And we're gonna do the same thing with Resident Evil. And then delete these folders. Now I cannot tell you where to get GameCube or Wii ROMs, but they are not that hard to find. But if you would like some additional help, then over on Patreon, I have a video that may help you with this. Back on the emulator, let's go ahead and double click right here. Go ahead and locate wherever you have your ROMs, in my case on my desktop, in that folder I created, Dolphin Games. Now let's go up to graphics. Now notice for the back end, it will automatically be set on metal. Now metal will give you the best performance on Mac that you can possibly get. You don't want to switch this to Vulkan or OpenGL. All of these will give you better performance on Windows. The Mac Mini I am using has an M2 chip and it doesn't matter if it's an M series chip or an Intel chip. Regardless, metal will give you the best performance with Dolphin. For the aspect ratio, I prefer to play my games in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio so that I can see them in full screen. But if you prefer to play your games in the ratio they were intended to be played in, then just leave it in auto or force 4 to 3. But I'm going 16 to 9. We're going to turn on V-Sync to make sure we don't get any screen tear. And we're going to start in full screen. So when we start Dolphin, we start our games in full screen. And down here, we're going to check compile shaders before starting. This way, all of your shaders will load before you play a game so you won't have any stuttering issues. Now let's go back up to the top and go over to enhancements. 
Next to internal resolution, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to 1080p and you have the option to go all the way up to 8K. I don't suggest that, maybe 1440p or 4K depending on your monitor, but I'm going with 1080p. Anti-aliasing, this will smooth out your edges in game. I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up to two times, but keep in mind the higher you go will be more taxing on your CPU. The same thing goes for texture filtering, but I'm gonna go ahead and crank this also to two times. And since I am gonna be playing my games in a 16 to nine aspect ratio, I'm gonna go ahead and check widescreen hack. Now let's go over to advance. Now, if you would like to see your frame rate that you are getting in game, then you can go ahead and check this box right here. I'll go ahead and check it for the video. And we are done here, so we can come down to close. Now let's set up our controller. So let's come up here to controllers and we're gonna set up our GameCube controller first. So next to port one, click on configure. Now under device, you're gonna click on the drop down arrow, find your controller. In my case, Xbox Series X. Now right here where it says reset, hit clear. And now we're gonna go ahead and map our controller out. We can start with the buttons. All you wanna do is click in the box next to the button you're ready to set up. So we can start with A, click in the box next to it, then hit whatever button on your controller you want to be the A button. Repeat the same thing for B, X, Y, Z, and start. Do your D-pad, your control stick, which will be your left analog, your C stick, which is your right analog, and your triggers. Once we are finished, we're gonna save this controller layout. So let's come up to profile, click in the box and give the controller a name. I'm just gonna call it P1 and save. Then come down to close. If you have multiple controllers connected to your Mac, repeat the same thing for port two, three, and four. Now we're gonna set up our Wii remote. So go ahead and plug the Dolphin Bar into any available USB port available on your Mac or any USB hub that you may have connected. The power button to turn on the Dolphin Bar will be on the back. Now you have four different modes that you can put the Dolphin Bar in and you can change through them by hitting the mode button. So mode one is for keyboard and mouse. Mode two is keyboard and mouse game mode. Mode three is for controller support. And mode four is for real Wii remotes. And this is the mode we want. Now you need to figure out if you wanna use the dolphin bar on top of your monitor. If you do, then you wanna switch this to top. And if you're gonna be using it below your monitor, then you wanna switch it to bottom. Now we can go ahead and sync up our Wii remote. So press the sync button and the light will start blinking. Then grab your Wii remote, take the back off and you will find the sync button. Go ahead and press it. And then your Wii remote will sync as player one. Now back over on the emulator, next to Wii remote one, we wanna change this to real Wii remote. Now to make sure everything is synced up and ready to go, you wanna hit refresh. And when you press this, your Wii remote should vibrate. If it does, then your Wii remote is connected to the dolphin bar. Then we can come down to close. Now at this point, we can simply go ahead and load up a game. But first, I wanna show you how to make your interface look a lot better by giving your games box art. So let's come up here to config, go over to interface, and you wanna check this box right here that says download game covers from gametdb.com for use in grid mode. Then go ahead and close. Now we need to change our display over to grid view. To do this, we're gonna have to enlarge the emulator. So let's go up here and let's go over to full screen. And now let's go up to the top so we can see our settings and go over to view and then click grid view. And there we are, our games now have box art and this looks a lot better. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load up both of these games to show you that GameCube and Wii games are working. We'll do GameCube first.
thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.